Hello there and welcome to the Card Grotto. Today I'm taking a look at day 6 of the Spellbinders 12 Days of Stitchmas Advent Calendar and creating two cards using the die set. So let's get started. So let's open day 6 on the Advent Calendar and see what's behind the door. So I can already see behind the door that it looks like it's a gift. So I can just peel back that paper and then I've got those dies inside. So let's have a look and see what this set consists of. So I can just open up the packet here and there are all of the little pieces to create a gift box. So I've got the outside piece, the stitching piece that goes inside, I've got the top of the box and then also a ribbon and a bow to add on top. So really versatile. I think this can be used all year round as well which is really great. For my cards today I'm also using the 12 Days of Stitchmas sti Stitch Along Add-on Kit. So this is such a great kit, there is absolutely tons in here. So I know I'm going to be using some of the floss. I'm also going to be using this beautiful metallic thread. I've also got the needles there and the needle minder. There's some beautiful gems, some foam squares. I absolutely love that bobbin stamp and die. That is so cool. And then there's also loads of different sheets of cardstock and I'm going to use some of those on my cards today. I'm gonna to start off by die cutting the gift. But these dies come separately, which is great because they're really versatile so that you can actually cut this gift without the stitching detail if you wanted to. But I know that I want to cut this multiple times. So what I want to do is attach these two dies together so that they don't shift around when I die cut them. So I'm taking some best ever craft tape and I'm adding that onto the back of these dies to hold them together. So just adding that along the back and then I can lift that up off of my craft mat and I'm going to remove any of the excess tape from the sides with scissors. I don't want to use this tape to actually hold the dies down while I'm die cutting because I might accidentally shift one of those dies. So I can just remove that tape with scissors and I am going to reuse these pieces of tape to actually hold down those dies. So I'm running those through my Platinum 6 here and I'm cutting the gift itself from Cosmic Sky cardstock and the ribbon and bow from Brushed Gold cardstock. And both of those cardstocks are from the Stitch Along kit. So just lifting that stitching detail up there and you can see how pretty that is already. I'm then going to die cut those all again from that same cardstock. And this is so that I can add stability onto the back of the stitching die in particular. I find that it's really helpful to have them quite thick. So what I'm going to do here is add some Barely Art Glue onto one of those pieces here. Just going around all of the edges. I'm not too concerned if it gets into the holes but I am trying to avoid them if possible. So just going around all of these here, I probably added more glue than I actually needed to, but I wanted to make sure that they were going to be really well stuck down. And then I can add the other one on top. And like I say, this is going to give me some stability and it's really going to help with the stitching. And I'll show you why a little bit later. I don't actually need to cut these other pieces twice, but I do just like to have that added dimension. So I'm just going to do the same thing for the top of the gift box there and then also for the bow piece and the ribbon as well. So using that liquid glue is going to give me a little bit of wiggle room to wiggle them together and try and line them up as best as possible. For the stitching I'm using the gold metallic thread in the kit. Now I'll be honest with you I'm not a gold fan but I think it works really nicely against dark blue and I thought that it would really pop against that dark blue cardstock for the gift. 
So I've threaded that through the needle and I'm using the needle minder here to hold my needle while I'm not using it. I've never had one of those before and it's really very helpful. To secure the thread on the back of the present to start with, I'm using some Best Ever Craft Tape. This is the thinner version and I've just cut a little bit of that and I'm placing that on the back of the thread. I didn't keep the thread very long for me to be able to cut much off of it. So I am struggling a little bit here to get the scissors behind it, but I just want to cut that excess off. I can then start on the stitching. So this stitching is really quite easy. I'm having it so kind of like each of the sections is one particular section, if that makes sense. So what I'm doing here is I'm going through the middle hole and then going around the outside edges. So this thread, if you've never used it before, is a little bit more on the slippery side. So what happens is when you kind of go through the next stitch, then it pulls the stitch in that was previous. So the threads end up quite loose, as you can see here, because it hasn't really got anything to grab onto because the thread is slippery. So it, it does take a little while to kind of get used to because it does look like it's not kind of threading properly or stitching properly, I should say. But it is, it's just, it takes a little while for that thread to kind of get taut around the areas. So just going in through that centre hole and then through the outside edges. And here is where you can see that that thread caught on the side of the gift. And that is why I like to have my cardstock be two layers thick I tend to do this quite a lot and once it happens once it then just seems to happen all of the time I don't know if it's how I'm particularly holding my thread but that's why I like to have that stability because if there was only one layer of the cardstock I think that it would bend it quite a lot so I've done that first section here and then I can start on the second section. So just doing the exact same thing, going up through the centre hole and then through those holes around the outside edge. So once I've finished going around the outside edges, I have secured that on the back with some more Best Ever Craft Tape. And I forgot to show you at the beginning that once I'd cut the two pieces of the stitching detail, I then took those dies apart to die cut the back piece. You don't necessarily have to use that back piece, but it just covers up that stitching at the back. And it's quite helpful if you wanted to use this as a gift tag or if you wanted to use it as an ornament or something like that. That. To adhere all of these pieces together, I'm using some 1 8 inch of double sided tape. And then I can stick the top of the gift box here to the bottom of the gift box to start with. Just lining those up and then I can press those down and then I can add some more of the double sided tape along the back. And that's going to hold that back piece in place. So I've removed all of those backing pieces off of that tape and then I can pop that down and you can see that that just covers that up really nicely. So just making sure that that's lined up and then I can really press that down. I'm then adding some belly art glue onto the back of the ribbon piece. And then just using my tweezers here, I can pop that down just in the center of the gift. And I love that the top part of that ribbon kind of just hangs really nicely. It's got a little bit of movement to it. And then I can pop a little bit more glue onto the bottom piece of that bow. And then that is the gift completed. So to bring the card together, I'm going to hot foil a sentiment from the Glitter Wishes Glimmer Hot Foil Plate and Die Set. And I'm going to foil that onto some white cardstock using champagne foil. I like to hold everything down together. So I've placed the foil shiny side up onto the cardstock, then the foil plate facing downwards. Then I'm holding it down with some more Best Ever Craft Tape. I'm going to flip that over and then pop that on the Glimmer Hot Foil system. I've let that heat up. I can remove the platform from the base and then add the shims on top.
and then run that through my platinum six and that's just my personal preferred preference of how to do hot foiling i know that everyone does it slightly differently i'm being careful here to remove the tape and then i can lift that off and I did get a tiny little bit of overfoiling. I don't know how well you can see that on camera. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over it with my finger first. Sometimes that actually does get rid of any excess overfoiling. And then I'm just going to take a sand eraser and just go around those little pieces there that have slightly overfoiled. I've then added some thin foam tape onto the back of the gift and I can do that down onto a four and a quarter by four and a quarter square white card base. I've then added some more thin foam tape onto the back of the sentiment strip. I cut that down using the die that comes with the Glitter Wishes set. But I know that it's going to overhang on the sides of the card. So I'm taking the foam squares from the kit. These are quite a bit thicker than the thin foam tape that I've been using. And I've added that on either side of that strip and placed that down. I then managed to injure myself with the tweezers, adding a little bit of foam tape just behind where that bow is, just to give that a little bit of stability. I'm then going to finish off the card with some gold mix colour essential gems. I'm adding those into the centres of the stitching. And then also one on the top of the bow there as well. And I think that that just really finishes off that card. It's really quite clean and simple, but I wanted to show you that you can use the kind of minimum out of the advent calendar and the kit if you want to, but you can definitely kind of zhuzh it up a little bit, which is what I'm going to do for my second card. But I thought that that one worked quite well as a gift card holder. For my second card, I have cut the gift from Snowdrift cardstock from the kit and I'm going to do stitching with the blue floss in the kit. So this is the darker of the two variegated flosses. This is Delft Blue and I want to have the variegation of the colours in this thread be sort of the darker shades. So when I cut this thread, I'm going to cut some of the lighter shades off. I can use that for a separate project, but I'm actually not cutting very much off of this thread anyway from what it was in the packaging. This floss is six strands thick, so I'm separating them so that they're going to be three strands each. This is a little bit more difficult with that plaster on my thumb, so I do apologise for that, but I do tend to injure myself quite easily when I'm crafting. So I'm just separating those threads together. I do have to stop occasionally and just make sure that that thread isn't getting too knotted up. But this is just going to make it a little bit thinner so it's a little bit easier for me to stitch with. So I'm just going to do the same thing like I did for the first gift and pop a little bit of that best ever craft tape on the back to secure that thread in place. And then I can start stitching like I did with the other one. But this time I'm going to have it so that where the variations of the colour is, they're going to be opposite sides on the gift. So I'm starting off with the darker shades in this thread and I'm going through and doing the same stitching like I did for the first gift, going in through the centre hole and then through those ones at the side. And I think that that blue thread really pops against that white card in the background. So it's kind of like the opposite of the first one. And so now as I'm stitching this second piece here, you can see that the thread is getting slightly lighter in colour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the darker colour on kind of either corner and then the lighter colour on the other opposite corners. So I'm kind of coming towards the end of the thread piece here and it worked out really nicely because I've got one lot of thread for two parts of the gift and then the other part of the thread for the other two parts of the gift which is really quite helpful. 
So I finished that here as you can see and then when I start with the next piece of thread I'm going to go to the opposite corner. So this one here at the top there and it's going to be opposite and you can see here that I think it looks quite nice having those opposites but they're all still quite dark shades of the thread just again so that they really pop against that white base. I'm going to adhere the gift together like I did for the first one and then I've taken some Cosmic Sky cardstock and I foiled a sentiment from the A Merry Little Christmas Sentiments Glimmer Hot Foil Plate and Die Set using champagne foil. And I originally thought I was going to leave it as is so I did it down onto the Cosmic Sky card base and then I decided that actually I thought it looked quite nice with some ink blending around the outside edges. So I've just masked off that top part or the back part I should say of the card base so that I can add some ink around it. And I'm using Better Press inks here from the Regal Tone set and although these are not made to do ink blending with they actually blended really quite nicely. I wanted to have a colour that was really quite close in shade to the Cosmic Sky cardstock and this Cosmic Sky ink works perfectly for that. So as I'm going around the outside edges here with the blending brush it's just going to add a little bit of darkness around the outside edges. You can't see it a huge amount but it's going to add as kind of like a sort of transition colour for when I add the black on top. So just going around the outside edges here and then I can really go in with the darker shade which is the Better Press Black and really just darken up those edges. And I do think adding that Cosmic Sky ink in just helps to blend this black ink and it doesn't kind of look so harsh. I don't think it really reads as black as such, it just looks darker I think. So I'm going around all of the outside edges and I'm so glad that I did this. Again I wasn't sure if that was where I was going to go with this card originally but I think it really just helps bring your eye into the focal point which is the present that I'm going to add in the centre. So I'm just finishing off that ink blending. I didn't get any ink on the foil but if I did I could remove that with a dry cloth. I'm just taking that memo tape off and now I've got my card base ready to add the gift on top with some thin foam tape. I've then cut some foliage pieces from the Snowflake Card Creator set. I wanted this card to have a little bit more of a Christmassy holiday feel to it. My first card was quite generic, which I love because I can use that throughout the year. But for this one, I did want to make it a little bit more Christmassy. And I thought some foliage would work quite nicely. So I've cut the branch pieces from some vellum. I did think about cutting them from green, but ultimately I wanted to keep the colour combination on this card to just be the blue, the white and the gold. So I'm using that bow piece just as a placeholder so that I can see where I want to add the branches behind. I've just added a tiny dab of the belly art glue just towards the bottom of these branches and I'm kind of poking them behind the top part of that gift so that you're not going to be able to see that adhesive. So just finishing off with that last branch here and then I can add the bow piece on top but at this point I did decide to do like I did with the first card and just add a little bit of foam square just behind where that bow is going to stick down just to give it a little bit of extra stability and then I can pop that bow on top and the great thing about liquid glue is that if I don't get it quite in the right place I can wiggle that before the glue dries. I've then cut the holly leaves from that same brushed gold cardstock and then I can pop those on top of the bow and I just think that foliage really does bring in more of a holiday kind of vibe to the card and this is I thought it would just look nice how some people do actually wrap up gifts really nicely with adding foliage and things like that I always try to do it every year and I end up failing but I would love to have my gifts look like this so just adding that last holly leaf there and then I can finish off by adding some more of the gold mix colour essential gems like I did for the first card. So just popping that one there at the bottom of the bow and then I can add the smaller ones into the centres of those stitching and I did decide to add a few extra just around the foliage at the top just to bring in a little bit more sparkle onto this card.
And so that is the second card finished for today. I really love how that gift just pops out from the ink blending and the background. And I can just bring in my first card again, which is a little bit more simple, but great to use as a gift card or money holder. Links to the products that I used will be listed in the description bar on YouTube and also over on my blog. This video is part of a free stitch along class happening over at Spellbinders. For more inspiration, please head over to the Spellbinders YouTube channel and blog. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.